This is a company that has worked with hacked material, right? This is a company that will send out videos of people being murdered to intimidate voters. Now, Aggregate IQ has denied breaking any laws or knowingly using hacked data, but allegations now reach beyond Britain and into other countries. And Adrian has been going through documents and interviews and has a sense for us tonight of what AIQ does and where. When Chris Wiley spoke to British parliamentarians, there was more than Brexit on his mind. He testified the Canadian company Aggregate IQ at the heart of some key questions in the UK was involved in other ventures that to him are a problem. The election in Nigeria, March 2015, the most expensive election ever held on the continent of Africa. Aggregate IQ was, <clears throat> was handed material uh, in, in Nigeria from Cambridge Analytica to distribute online. So that's distribution of compromat, and that's also distribution of incredibly uh, threatening and violent video content. Dark, scary, very uncertain. These videos scaring voters about the dangers coming if the opposition candidate, Muslim Mohammed Bahari, won, which he ultimately did, by the way. Anti-Islamic videos, um, you know, that, that AIQ's role was to distribute, uh, you know, to voters in those countries, which would be incredibly intimidating, um, you know, to voters to see, you know, people literally being burned alive on your screen. Wiley's written testimony says those videos were eventually pulled for being too graphic. So how did Aggregate IQ get involved? What does it say to concerns? Again, today, we reached out to the company and did not hear back. But think of it as a tool maker. One of its Victoria, B.C. addresses empty now, but not long after it was started in 2013, the potentially 20 AIQ employees would have been busy here writing code, apps, software that the company built for SCL and used, according to documents and testimony, on projects worldwide. What tools? Ripon, built in 2014, for example, a way to harness potential supporters online named after the town where the Republican Party was born. That application used by Ted Cruz in the U.S. primaries and Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Documents show AIQ applying its data tools to an election in Trinidad and Tobago in 2015. AIQ went to work for the B.C. Liberal leadership hopeful Todd Stone. The company blamed by Stone's camp when more than 1,000 new memberships were tossed out for being improper. Now, new indications AIQ is connected with the upcoming Ukrainian election. It built a new app considered a social networking app called Osnova after the Ukrainian opposition party, another way to attract more supporters and build up contacts. What started as a small BC company now has a wide reach. The sort of work is coveted and legal and just what elections and campaigns look like now. This is an era when whistleblowers are important. People need to feel comfortable, of course, that their information is being protected. Well, we have an online location where you can confidentially reach out to any of our CBC journalists. It's called Secure Drop. It's a tool that's been credited with protecting sources on a number of news stories. What it is, how you can use it, find it at securedrop.ca.cbc.ca, rather. The man at the center of all this, Canadian Christopher Wiley, unraveled Cambridge Analytica's tangled web of operations for a committee of Britain's parliament today, detailing just how the firm and its proxies targeted swing voters in the tightly fought Brexit vote. As Mar Margaret Evan explains, it was a master class in digital manipulation and cheating. Onto the United Kingdom's fractured political landscape, still bitterly divided by the Brexit referendum, there comes another storm. This time in the form of Canadian whistleblower Chris Wiley, drawing paparazzi-like attention ever since his allegations surfaced about Cambridge Analytica and the data it took from millions of Facebook users without their permission. So I'd like to welcome uh, Christopher Wiley and Paul. Today, Wiley told a British parliamentary committee that the country's official Leave campaign had had access to that Facebook data through the firm he describes as Analytica's Canadian franchise. Aggregate IQ was just used as a proxy money laundering vehicle. 
Wiley repeated claims that the main group advocating for Britain to leave the EU, vote leave, circumvented election spending limits by donating money to another leave campaign, which then bought services from Aggregate IQ, also working for vote leave. In other words, he says, they cheated. I think it is completely reasonable to say that there could have been a different outcome in the referendum, you know, had there not been, in my view, cheating. For those here still hoping Britain can pull itself back from the precipice and stay in the EU, it's a potential lifeline, but only just. If there has been some kind of election fraud, the result would likely be a fine, say experts, and not an avenue to a referendum rerun unless it comes from a political groundswell. It would give, I think, um, uh, more power to those who call for a second referendum. That's what pro-EU campaigners are hoping for. The margin was so tight and it was one of the first examples of the really widespread use of social media campaigning in our country. We now come to the emergency debate. On the but the benches in the House of Commons were mostly empty today during an emergency debate on the allegations, a sign perhaps that the storm may be short-lived, or perhaps a strategy by the Conservative government of hear no evil, see no evil. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London.